Hello, I'm Daryl Goodman, Director at Achieve It Solutions, and today's feature focus presentation will show how importers can use Resolve Container Management on SAP Business One to maintain their projected line of costs and use pre billing to pay in advance for materials so that they can get their documents released from customs. We'll start by reviewing SAP Business One Container Management. So here you can see we're in my dashboard, and I'm able to see a bunch of different documents, but I'm going to come over to Container Management and open up my Container Entry Shipment. The container entry shipment here that I've brought up uh, allows me to be able to identify all of the material that's coming in on an actual, in this case, ocean container, but it could be air containers or other types like rail cars. And this is going to allow me to organize the material that's coming in. So you can see here, I actually have different purchase orders. So I have two different purchase order numbers. In fact, these are coming from two different vendors. So I'm able to identify all of the products that are coming in that might be put to a freight forwarder or otherwise brought together, pack them into different containers. Um, here you can see in this particular case, case, I've packed everything just into one container. But if this was a multi-container shipment, meaning that uh, I had a boat that had multiple containers coming in, I'd be able to go ahead and pack those as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking a look at one of the most important aspects of being able to bring in your imported shipments, which is being able to plan all of the different costs that would be associated with it and have them available so that people could use the information in advance of the material being received and be able to sell knowing what the projected land cost will be. So because of that, we have a projected land to cost table that's going to allow you to start to accumulate your costs as soon as you know them. So you can use an estimated cost, you can use actual costs sometimes that you have before the products are received. And as you can see here, we have a couple of different uh, entries already in our projected land to cost table. They came from our predefined land to cost function. This allows us to build templates that we can use where if we constantly bring in the same costs every shipment, we have the ability to you know, have a template that we can follow. And here you can see we were able to add that. Now, in this particular case here, you'll notice that uh, I obviously just duplicated this, but it gives me the opportunity to show you here that we have the ability to use any of the land costs that we create. So uh, for instance, if uh, instead of having the, uh, the, the storage here, this was a demurrage charge, we'd be able to go ahead and to name what the, uh, the landed cost is going to be. We could also choose how we want to allocate it. So you can see this particular one was allocated by volume, but I also have the ability to allocate uh, by quantity. I can equally divide it by all the rows so that every item in the shipment is burdened equally, or I can do the cash value before or after customs. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and change it to quantity, and we can go ahead and change this to be a $2,000 demurrage charge. And then similarly, I can either delete the row, uh, or you know maybe I've got a uh, another shipping charge and uh, this is going to be um, you know inland freight so we'll go ahead and we'll uh, just change the amount so you can see here that we've got all the different unique amounts now at this point you see I have accumulated this before I've done any receiving so I have no goods or CPOs in the system but I am able to accumulate all of the information for my container that's calculated a landed unit cost so how much money uh, based on the different rules for the allocations be five cents uh, and it gives me a row total with the unit cost so I'm able to see you know the 5,000 pieces cost me a total of uh, $4,765.49 and it does the same calculation for every single one of the uh, the different items and uh, I don't have the columns turned on but if I'd wanted to I could also see exactly how it broke down so I could see what percentage of this 95 cents was because of quantity because of volume and so on and I'm able to get that information now another common thing that's needed to be done uh, in addition to being able to manage your costs that are coming in for a shipment is to be able to go ahead and pay the vendor for the material in advance because in order to be able to get the material released from customs, a lot of times you have to have paperwork that shows that it's done, also different FOB terms. And so you can see here, I have this feature turned on called pre-build. And what the pre-build is going to allow me to do is to highlight the rows that came in from a, uh, a vendor's AP invoice. In this case, I'm saying the vendor sent me an AP invoice for all four lines they shipped. And you'll notice here, I have a reserve invoice. A reserve invoice is a function of SAP Business One that allows me to create an AP invoice, a legal document that I can pay um, in my AP, okay, in advance of receiving the product. So it closes the purchase order. It does show that I have an AP that's payable that my accounting department can do wire transfers uh, or checks against. Um, in fact, we can do it all in one step here. So you can see um, I can come in here and indicate that if this is my, if I am in, in accounts payable and I'm doing this step, I can come in here and indicate that it was paid by wire. So we'll just come in here and um, 
will transfer the, uh, the the full balance, the 27.5. And so, you know, in this case, I am both um, entering the AP invoice as well as putting in the wire, um, and I can put in the wire transfer reference number or whatever the AP invoice number is going to be in my vendor reference number field, and we'll go ahead and post this. So now what will wind up happening is, is that um, when I go ahead and I post this, the system knows that it made a payment. It's keeping track. It automatically does the accounting entries to show that we have a, a prepaid, so there's no accruals that need to be done. But more importantly for the importers, you can see here that it's now updated the data in the container so that we know that we have this invoice already paid. So we have PO number 12828 that went to invoice number 12715. And as a result, we can go ahead and we can bring that documentation with us to the port released to us from our vendor. And also when we create the receiving, the receiving will be done against the reserve invoice, which will automatically relieve the accrual and handle all of the accounting properly. So you get your document documentation handled for you, you get your accounting handled for you, and you're able to still track everything inside of, of Business One. You don't need to go outside of the system to be able to track that you've prepaid anything. With that, I hope you've seen how easy it is to use container management to be able to track both your, your pre-bill scenarios where you need to pay in advance for your products before you've actually received them to your warehouse, as well as being able to take a look and see how you can use your projected land to cost functionality, which allows you to automatically keep track of your, your freight charges before the product is received in the warehouse even better what will wind up happening is is that when we do receive this and we can receive you know by container again we can have the multiple containers is is that um, it will automatically allocate between the two different vendors so like that demurrage charge which is really based on the fact that we didn't go pick up from the port on time or something along those lines will automatically be allocated to each of the different rows and the system will push this to the appropriate documents inside of SAP the land cost document without the users having to sit there and do a manual calculation it will actually go ahead and, uh, and create that document for you. It's a complete end-to-end -end process. I hope that you're able to see how simple and easy it was to use Resolve Container Management for SAP Business One to manage your import needs. Thank you very much.